Now I'm Bob Cobb from the Bassmasters, and this is LD and the MC. Well, as the amazing Mr. Bob Cobb just told you, you have arrived at LD and the MC. The number one internationally hosted fishing and other stuff podcast ever. Ever. That's, I don't know. Was that People Magazine? Where, where did that, uh, where was, did that come a, from? A consortium. I believe a consortium of magazines got together. <laughs> okay. Uh, consortium. Okay. I don't know if that's really a word, but consortium of magazines got together and voted it um, the number one internationally hosted fishing and other stuff podcast ever. So, yeah. I ever. mean. In in week fourteen, in week fourteen, high praise, high, high praise, the highest praise really. When you get ever, ever on the end of it, the number one at the beginning is very important, but the ever on the end really is uh, that that got me in my feels, Mister uh, MC. It got me in my feels. We preach honesty on this show, so I'll start <laughs> with honesty. I I added the ever, Luke. I, I the ever was me. <laughs> The magazines would never have done that, but I mean, I think ever is is fitting. And and man, dude, uh, we keep talking about this little freaking engine that could, which is our stupid little podcast. And man, yes. what a freaking week! Um, unbelievable. Like we're gonna, but I mean, we don't ever. We're not those numbers guys who throw it out there. But I'm throwing it out there just because it ain't us. I mean, we do this. Yeah, part. that's right. Use. Two, that's all we account for. But all the other, it's it's you guys. It's the humpers. It's the people the that humpers. listen every single week. Um, and this, this, I mean, YouTube alone, I think we got like 30,000 plays between our two channels. We're going to be like 75,000, 80,000 plays from episode 13. And I mean, a, a, a big percentage of those is, is a, a Rob Turkle fans and Lunkers TV fans and and Guggen Squad, the Guggen Squad squad that really what just they, wants to meet us at the, the monkey bars. Are they just are they the squatters? We've got the the humpers. Are they the squatters or are they just the Guggen Squad collectively? Are they Guggen Squad fans? What do we call the Guggen the Guggenites that have now found LD and the MC? What do we refer to them as? Uh, b- 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 welcome, if you like. Welcome, us. yeah, if, for if sure. Welcome aboard. I mean, we've never got this many views. Number one, so thank Ever. you. Yeah. Uh, also, never got this many likes. So thank you. But thank also. You. N- <laughs> Forgot this many dislikes, Luke. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, the records. I mean, we got more dislikes with last week's show than we did for the first 12 shows combined. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, uh, you know, want to say again, thanks to Rob var- making me varsity coming on the show. But Rob, Dave, we, we found out this weekend. He sent us a little link. Rob dropped a video, as the mm-hmm. YouTube crew says, and he put a, the clips in from the show and says, hey, you know, we're stirring a few the pot. Selected, a few a selected, selected clips. clips. Very carefully edited. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, you know I like Rob. You like Rob. But I was like, oh, boy. You know, here they come. And he gave the link to the Facts of Fishing YouTube channel, which you should be subscribed to, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, and if you're watching this on the Facts of Fish and YouTube channel, you should definitely be subscribed to Luke Duncan's Travel. Yeah, absolutely. Circus. I appreciate that so much. You should, and like and subscribe, turn on notifications, smash that no button. No more of that. Okay. No more of that. No more of that. But I did worry because before he made the video, there were some hate comments directed our way on, on my little channel and your, your little channel. Then Rob makes the video, and I have heard – I haven't taken a gander through there. I'm just, I'm just, what I'm going to talk about today is what I'm dealing with on my personal channel, what you're dealing with on your personal LD and the MC's channels. But apparently we got pretty, pretty, uh, you know, we got torched pretty good on the old Lunkers TV 1.8 million subscriber YouTube channel. But the overwhelming theme to me is they're like, why are you hating on Rob? Why are you, you, you guys just thirsty for views? Well, first of all, we'd like to say yes, we we are very thirsty. I will drink to that. But, but that being said, we're not hating on Rob. It is our, it, I'll say this is my opinion. I won't speak for the MC. You, you will hear the MC's opinion as you did last week. But we are in the professional fishing world. Dave represents lots of organizations, but he works for the organization that Rob is going to compete in. 
Rob is from the YouTube world. He has owned the YouTube fishing world with the rest of the Googans. There was a time they told and many about, others okay. and many others, Listen, many others, many we love others. all YouTubers, of course, and especially of course. ones that get us mega views. Yes, bring <laughs> them. We are Brent, not against you. Not discriminating against because any of you. We're talking about Come one on. doesn't mean we hate another. We're talking about one. That's Continue. right. Continue. We'll Sorry get, for we'll, the interruption. We'll, we'll, but we'll, no, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. But my thing is this. These guys, the reason we feel like we have a right to talk about it, and the reason I feel like Rob thinks, hey, I'll give these guys five minutes, ten minutes of my day, he does respect Dave and I enough to give us that, okay? But the reason we feel we get to talk about this is this – the YouTuber versus pro fishing world has done this for years. Pros don't like YouTubers. YouTubers don't like pros. And now the biggest, one of the biggest, is coming into our little collective bubble. So we get to evaluate that because it's the same thing we do with pro fishermen on our podcast, in our videos. We talk about, we break it down. What's going on? If a guy sucks, we say it sucks. If he catches them, we talk about how he catches them. So Rob's no different. He doesn't get a free pass because he's got almost 2 million subscribers. So what I would say to you fans is we weren't hating on Rob. We were laying out the realities of the situation. What he is doing is going to be difficult. He is a good angler. He's made a lot of fishing videos. He sold a lot of Guggen baits. But, but this is not an easy task. We see pro anglers that have spent their lives training for these moments not succeed in the opens, not compete for the, you know, into the elite series. They don't qualify. They don't make the Bass Master class. They don't get checks. They finish in the hundreds, man. So it's not an easy task. So don't take that as hate. Take that as fact. <laughs> it's fact. Don't hate us because you don't understand maybe the tournament world. Like we're just people in that world. So I say all that to say, MC, what kind of hate did you receive? In the mom's basement moment. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what was your favorite? What was your favorite take? I mean, all of them. I mean, they were all, uh, we were going to start reading them and stuff, but they're really just, it was too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we would have had to have a whole uh, individual yeah. podcast about that. Maybe we'll do that at some point. But, but basically, you know, that the heat, what, what, what really shocked me. Number one, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's our job to talk about what he's doing. Nobody said that that Rob isn't tough. Nobody said that he has – what that dude has seen – like, I mean, Rob will tell you, the first time me and him ever had an exchange, uh, it wasn't even a positive one, but then I learned more about him and seen everything he's seen, you know what I mean? Like in his life Absolutely. as a soldier, and I have so much respect for – for anybody, I mean, the, 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 the piddly little life that I have compared to anybody that lays their life on the line. I mean, I have so much respect for that. So it's nothing to do with that, you know, because there's a lot of comments. Well, Rob's done this. You think tournament fishing's hard? No. But what I think it, tournament fishing as a rule isn't hard. I mean, it, it, it's, it's something you can do at whatever level. But what Rob's trying to do is incredibly hard. To be successful at what he wants to do, you have to become the best of the best and you have to beat the best of the best. And we're also, if you're such a fan of Rob, if you're such a fan of Lunkers TV, which we both said, I'm a huge fan of this move. I mean, I think uh, this I respect, is- I respect the hell out of it. Uh, like, immense, immensely. Like it takes balls of steel to do this, man. And I, and I haven't heard one person in the industry that hasn't said that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, have I heard some, well, we'll see how he does? Yeah. yeah, of course. But I also heard that from Rob. You know what I mean? When we were interviewing Rob, he made kind of a crack about, it's funny how all these tournament guys are now on YouTube. That's right. Also, when Rob comes in, when they come into Rob's world, it's kind of the same feeling. We'll Very they much. Do. You know what I mean? Dude. And and I And I feel like... As Rob sees some of the tournament guys start to grow on YouTube, he'll also respect that because he knows the work that goes into it. So it's not about hate and this person, that person. We're it's our job to to talk about what realistic he is facing, and um, it wasn't hate or whatever. But but it, but to me, I think it's a bigger topic, Luke. Like, what's wrong with the world? Like that that what you saw in those comments 
Because there was a lot of Rob's fans who came in, thank you, and and subscribed. And also Absolutely. Said, yes. And, and welcome. Went out of their way to yeah. say, man, I started. Like what you're doing. Didn't I know saw about what you Rob guys. posted yeah. and, and came here to hate you, but I listened to it. And you yeah. were really objective. Like they, they listened to it all and absorbed it. But there was a lot of them that listened. To, like, I don't even know if, number one, they watched yeah. at all outside of the clip that they saw of his. Or if they did watch. I mean, because they're. Right away, they're like, "You guys are losers. You just you hate this. You you're just doing this because he, Rob's gonna beat you." And turn, they don't even know where we like. I know Rob's is gonna beat me. I'm I'm the I'm the freaking bingo caller. You can't beat the bingo caller. I'm still gonna call B42. The only thing that beats the bingo caller is laryngitis, or if I lose my job, which I mean might happen at some point. But what I'm saying is. Don't hate on everything in life. Like, it's just the way the world's become. You could put a picture up, Luke, of me and you going to lunch somewhere. Well, we went to lunch at Jerry's Diner. Guaranteed somebody's going to jump in there and be like, why'd you go to Jerry's? Jerry's Diner's a crap hole. I like they Jerry's. support blah, 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 blah. Yeah, whatever. And it's the cancel culture that we live in. I've talked about this before on other shows. Like, dude, if you disagree with me, you're canceled. If your political view is different than me, you're canceled. And of all people on earth that you follow, that you're fans of, that against cancel culture, Rob Turkle is that guy. He's Mr. Freedom of Damn Space. NFG. Guns blazing. (laughs) Yeah. NFG shop. And you're telling, you guys, I'm never coming back here again. Dude, you're doing like, you're doing the opposite. So I'd like to end this mom's basement s- segment with this, Dave. I would like to say thank you, first of all, to anybody that gave us a fair shake that came over here from Rob and you gave us a shake and a thumbs up and you comment and said, hey, dude, I didn't even know anything about you. I like your stuff. I'm here. Several of those. Thank you. To the ones that, hey, if you're watching this again this week, stick around. Stick around. There may be some things later this year that you're like, Damn, I never saw that coming. You'd be surprised, okay? I will throw that out there and just give us a chance, man. Give us a chance. Make this your number one internationally hosted podcast, you know? We talk about everything. Everything. Stick around. Was that inviting? Was that inviting? It was very inviting. Was I very felt inviting. like it was very – did you feel like – it felt like an internet hug almost. I, I thought it was. I thought it was. And, and, and you know, I want to end your ending to the mom's basement moment with something <laughs> because I think we should pay tribute to somebody that kind of it's ringing in my head right now. These words, the world lost somebody this week. Uh, one of the greatest talk show hosts of our lifetime, Larry King, obviously passed uh, away. Amen. And one of the quotes he is famous for is nobody ever learned anything talking. And, and no, which, which means, obviously, you learn when you're listening, which is, which is true. But you never learn when you're just listening to people who say the same things you do. The world learns. The world becomes a better place when we listen to people with different viewpoints than us. And uh, I guess that's what makes our kind of show do what it does. So uh, yeah. let's all get along. And I will ask you, Luke Duncan, from that topic, the other thing that spewed from that was every – YouTuber we didn't include. Every, you know, people, of course. people there was a lot uh, of Big Bass of Dreams course. people. Why didn't you include them? Great dude. Great guy. Um, I love Oliver. and it, He doesn't have 1.8 yeah, yeah. million followers. I'm sorry. It's a different analogy. I'm, yeah, that's a different not a deal. slight on him, but I, I, I really look forward to seeing him. There's a lot of guys fishing the Opens this year that are going to be fun to watch. I mean, him, um, Brian Bickle. Three-time Stanley Cup champion yeah, uh, from like the Brian, Chicago man. Blackhawks, good buddy yeah. of mine. And, you know, uh, also B-Rob, you know, from, uh, right. from uh, Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota Vikings. Um, so there's, there's a lot of really cool stories that we'll get into and dig deeper in. But just because we hit one doesn't mean we hit them all. But while we're on that topic, with those YouTubers, you know, 500,000 followers, a million followers, those – you saw a lot of names thrown out there. Some of them are guys I'm friends with. Some of them guys I don't know. Uh, but between us, we know them all for the most part. But, you know, you, you heard a lot of Milliken. Uh, oh, yeah. He was thrown out a lot. 
Um, I heard tactical bass and guys throwing of out course. there a lot. You know, all the Googans, obviously. Everybody wants Lake Fork guy to fish. Uh, yeah. Everybody wonders right. where the hell Alec Perrick is. Nobody knows. He's in a van by the river somewhere. <laughs> living his a... best life. He's living his best <laughs> life, man. But I will ask you clearly, where do you think, like, does this put pressure on those guys? Did he, you know, does Rob doing this, to, he, all of a sudden, are their fans putting pressure on those guys to, to come do this? Or is this a sit back, wait and see? I, man, I think that there's always, you know, I, I know, I know uh, the tactical bassing guys a little bit. I won't claim to know them well. I do know Ben Milliken well. We, uh, we share some sponsors, Six Cents. Shout out six cents. Uh, but good, good dude. I've shared a boat with him. He is uh, unbelievably competitive and he's a great angler. Great angler. He's got 300 and something thousand. He's a big ass following, right? Uh, he talks about, he is, in my opinion, more in our tournament world as far as keeping up with it. Like he, his heroes are Iconelli's and Van, you know what I'm saying? Like he's a, he's yeah, a tournament cool. guy. He was a tournament guy when he started Respects more. It. Right. He, he loves and respects it. So for me, Ben is a guy that I would see doing this at some point. And I think he puts that pressure on himself because that was his original dream before he started the YouTube thing. And then the YouTube thing took off for him. He stopped fishing bigger turn. He fished, he fished college attorneys. And then, but when he got out and he started the YouTube thing, he's like, well, I'm just filming all the time. He's a full-time YouTuber. So it kind of took away from the tournament. He still fishes a lot of local tournaments. But and he's talked about jumping in those opens and stuff. I don't know. Uh, somebody actually commented that on LBL that he announced that. I reached out to Ben. I haven't heard back yet. Um, ben, make me look like varsity. Come on. Are you fishing the opens? Are you not? But I, I do think this will put pressure on those guys because for whatever reason, it's like rap battles, rap wars. You have these these YouTube squads like the Guggen Squad. They're very much at at the throats of the Millikens of the world, because they do go at each other because Guggen versus Six. It's a weird thing. And I'm in the middle of it sometimes, like caught in the middle because I represent Six Cents, right? And so it's a very strange thing. And it's like a gang war. And, dude, you'll see the comments, oh, that's a rip off of Guggen. Oh, that's a rip off of Six Cents. Crazy. So I don't know if this move you'll start seeing that. Well, Milliken, you know, put Which your money both, in your mouth. For the record, are a rip off of every company of everything. Them. It, yeah, just, I mean, yeah. <laughs> just so, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. so you know, they're We're all ripping everybody else. Right? Less than ten years arguing about who's ripping off each other. <laughs> yeah, that's what. Sorry, that is, that I'm is an a, impartial a, judge. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> you just uh, you just called the fight, and I like it. You know, and like, we had the first square bill. No, you had the first square bill. No, the big O was the first. Square bill. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you keeping score in the 1950s uh, you know whatever so no that was a great that was a great point but i think that uh, i think this does put pressure if you have that internal pressure already on yourself like for for a ben i don't know about the tactical guys i don't know about oliver you know what his tournament fish and passion is but i do know ben's so i can speak to that and say for me i think this will light a fire under ben like you know, maybe I want to dip my toes. But I do think it is also, like you said, a, okay, we'll kind of see how this goes. Like, see what kind of hate the guy gets. See how he does. See how he handles that. Does he jump in and compete? You know, I think there is some of that because you got your deal going. You got your brand. The YouTube thing's your life. When you step into that world, it's like these guys that are super, super mad at us. These fans, sorry, my phone rang. Uh, you got these fans that are super mad at us because we're critical. Well, guess what? We're not the only podcast out there that's going to be critical of you if you're if you're in this pro fishing world. There are lots of them with lots of content and time to fill. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be careful, man, when you make that step. That's a whole new audience that maybe already discounts you because you're a quote YouTuber. You and I don't do that because we know how hard they work. We know how good of anglers a lot of these guys are, right? But your normal proficient fan sitting on the couch that doesn't care about YouTube and you're like, oh, you got 300,000 followers? You going to show up at this tournament? I hope you get beat. There's a lot of that, man. There's a lot of that. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful. So I think I think we'll see more and more and more it's like you're seeing these pro athletes, dude. Nobody's ever satisfied. Brian Robinson, he's freaking pro bowler, dude. Pro bowler. What the hell? Do you, why do you want to fish tournaments? We'll get into that. So, Brian Bickle, dude, these guys have done so, – they've lived lives we would just die to live. 
Like just coolest thing you can imagine get paid for, play a professional sport. Now they're like, pro fishing. They got to fill that void, dude, that competitive. So nobody's ever satisfied with anything. So I think, yeah, we're going to see more and more and more for I, sure. I think the point you made about those athletes makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's too – I think what they're doing makes a lot more sense than what you see a lot of ex-athletes do. I mean, you need to take yeah. that. I mean, if you're Brian Bickle, if you're Brian Robinson, you, your whole life, I mean, from a Canadian perspective, from the time Brian Bickle was 10, 11 years old, he's been Brian Bickle, the hockey player. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, kid, the kid that, man, this kid might might make it. And then as might he might be the one, yeah. Later, I mean, he started playing junior and things like that. And they're like, he's going to make the NHL. He's Brian Bickle, the NHL hopeful. Then he becomes Brian Bickle, the NHL player. Then he becomes Brian Bickle, the 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 um, the Chicago Blackhawk. Then he becomes Brian Bickle, Chicago Blackhawk, Stanley Cup champion. But he's always a hockey player. And then one day, all of a sudden, Goes away. Out. Yep. Like all of a sudden, and in his situation, it, you know, it was a medical situation, you know, right. MS and had to retire. And, and, but it, 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 that's how it ends for a pro athlete. That's what happens. It, it's true. It, only the very, very rare few get to walk away feeling like they're walking away. Um, so to turn off that competition side of it, I, I mean, it seems natural for me for those guys to do that. The thing that seems weird about it to me and, and is the sponsor thing. I mean, freaking <laughs> <laughs> the last man. contract, dude, was more than the cumulative sponsor <laughs> freaking income of the elite series. Okay? I'm yeah. Just, I, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think my stat is off at all. No, I, no, no, it's not. It it's might not. be multiple years worth of it. Yes. Uh, I now he's like, I, now he's like hashtag it. striking or whatever. I mean, it's cool. <laughs> it is weird. Company, yeah. but you, you stand in the uh, – I, got, I guess that's how, that also shows how passionate he is about well, it. Well, and dedicated to it, right? And he wants my sponsors. That's all I'm going to say, damn it. I'll, I will come at you like a freaking lineman, like a – Kansas City Chief oh, Gosh. Dude, right, I, don't we'll know do I don't know if you've ever lined up with Brian in any kind of situation because I have, like, maybe. I made him sack drunk Zona drunk. live. <laughs> live. On Bassmaster Live. I made him sack him. His hands are this long. Uh -huh. <laughs> he said, that dude, and he's fast. He's really fast. So, uh, Brian, uh, B-Rob, we love you. I'm sorry. I'll probably send you a text after this episode and tell you how sorry I am that Dave is a piece of garbage and talking about you so bad on this podcast. And I understand why the Guggen fans don't like it. How did I talk bad about him? We heard you, Dave. I said I'm going to edit this. Very, I'm going to edit. I'm going to edit this very the small guy. If Lunkers TV taught me anything, I'm going to edit this to my favor this week. Dave. Here's all I'm going to tell you. Some people try to make thousands of people happy. I just made about a, a 200 happy. All the pros that are making a living in this sport. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. I'm sorry, B-Rob. I, I love you. You know I do. I did it. I did it. He did it. Dave. They uh, did it, not me. What are you going to get me in trouble with next, Luke? Okay, so uh, this is one we brought up last week. I think it is a very uh, – it's a it's it's something that I, I – after we got off the air, I was like, well, we never really end this well, in my opinion. So Trip Weldon retiring, we paid our homage to Trip. We always need to do that because he was an amazing tournament director for the Bassmasters for years and years and years. Only the third tournament director of all time. But now we're a couple of weeks away from the kickoff. No announcements been made. What are you? What's your gut? What's your intel? What are you thinking? What like who's gonna who's gonna fill those shoes, man? That's and I have zero clue because I don't know how you even pick a tournament director. Okay, it's not gonna be you. They're not gonna give. They're not gonna <laughs> give you that responsibility. They're not gonna yeah. give it to Zona. They're not gonna give it to Ronnie Moore. They're not gonna call Ronnie and be like, Hey, Ron. We need you to be the tournament director. I could do that. So, who is it? Well, who you got? Who you got your money on? First of all, you just really upset Ronnie right now. Um, it's okay. He's te he's tearing up. I mean, he's upset surely Ronnie sure. doesn't think that that was going to be the next call he was going to get. 
Ron, it can, <laughs> Ronnie might. I really do think Ronnie might think I made line for this. Um, and it, I mean, dude, what, what can I don't Ronnie think so. Do? But um, uh, I don't know who it's going to be. They haven't made their announcement. And, you know, I, I don't find out about this. Um, Normally, I found out things about bass before you do. Let's just be honest. <laughs> well, I, I don't. A lot of times I don't want to know because I'm an idiot. Like, I'm not good at keeping secrets. Yeah, yeah. That's you know why they I mean? don't so A lot of times I'll be like, I forget that it's supposed to be a secret. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll go out on a limb um, because you've put me on the spot. And I, I'll tell you who I think it should be. Um and, and I think before I tell you who I think it should be, I think you got to look at their entire tournament staff. Um, I think their entire tournament staff is set up incredibly well right now. And, and I'm going to throw out some of the names that probably, um, and some people had mentioned some of these names um, in the comments and stuff like that last week. But you look at a guy like Chris Bowes. Chris Bowes does a great job at the Opens. Thank God Chris Bowes does the Opens. It's the toughest thing to MC in the history of mankind. I, I would never do that job. Uh, Chris Bowes, God bless you and thank you for, be, for being there. Um, so I don't think Chris Bowes is leaving the Opens. Um, plus, Chris Bowes lives in Florida. He likes to live in Florida. I think he, if, he, if you end up at the Elite Series, I think you have to live in Alabama. And I don't think Chris Bowes would want to move. But I, I, So I think that that position, he's great at the Opens. I think you've got John Stewart. Um, who does the Bass Nation stuff, which is so important. You know, he took over from Don Corcoran and, and you know, that connection with all of those club members and everything. I don't think you take somebody from the Opens to bring, bring them, you know, from Bass Nation to bring them over just because that's, it's different stuff. And then you've got Hank, you know, Hank Weldon, Tripp's son, um, who a lot of people will mention, but he runs the whole collegiate program and does a great job there. I think that the person that's best for the job, um, and it doesn't really matter my opinion. I, I mean, I, I think that this person is uh, incredibly uber skilled at this job. I think this person, I've watched this person be tested. Um, and it's Lisa Talmadge. It's LT. Okay. Um, which will shock a lot of people. And um, I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with her. I've seen, I've seen her on stage with you before. But other yeah. than that, I, I've never met Lisa. I don't, to my knowledge, I don't know Lisa. Lisa, um, Lisa, I mean, she's, I think she's from Albuquerque originally, you know, okay. grew up around the, um, their bass clubs and that sort of thing. And, you know, but that's how she got involved in, in the tournament end of things, you know, fish bass nation events and things like that. Then got involved in the clubs and started running some stuff and then went on to run, um, the entire weekend series, you know, for bass uh, for several years, you know, she did everything there. She weighed the fish. She emceed the event. She did it all. And then, um, and then did that for ABA after that for three or four years. So she's done okay, this. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's dealt, if you think somebody who's dealt with different situations, she's dealt with tons of different situations. And, um, and ultimately my, my reasoning goes for, for several different points. Just number one, I think that nobody's better at judging who's right for that job than the man who has that job. And that man's Trip Weldon. And LT was his right hand all last year. After Chuck retired, LT was, was Trip's right hand. LT stood in when Trip went down at the end of the season. Um, it's clear that that was who Trip was grooming for that position, I, I feel. I mean, that did, not that Trip said that, but I've also just watched her how she carries herself and I think it's perfect. I think it's it's a perfect time in the world for it to happen number 1. It's a perfect time for it to happen for Bass, but I also think she's perfect at the job. And and I'll tell some tales out of school, man. Last year think about the situation she went into when she stepped in at, where was it? I think it was at um at Chick, at Chick when Trip had left. Uh, that was all sudden, you know, like that trip to, that wasn't planned out, you know, trip fell ill and had to go get out of there. And, and she stood in, in that situation, you're, it's not your job. You don't have the free will. You know what I mean? You figured, yeah. Oh, that there's a lot. I mean, I'll say it like it is. There'd be a lot of guys who think oh, I could take advantage of this girl or something. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying what people think. And, 
I watched her, man, and I watched her make call after call that was the right call. And I watched her at one point, even at the beginning. Um, she's like Trip, man. She thinks it through. Like she really stops and calculates things. And I watched her. Um, I, I watched. I, it was during one of our fog delays one morning, and and I remember. And I'm not calling anybody out on this, but I remember her saying, okay, let's send them. The fog was clearing. And I remember one of the, the other tournament staff questioning that. And that's that's just normal work, right? Like, yeah, I mean, absolutely, yeah. if you're a mechanic, it's not somebody questioning her. But if you're a mechanic and somebody says, oh, no, you need to turn that wrench another time. And that guy is it. And you're just filling in. I mean, the average person would just turn that wrench. The average person would just listen to their coworkers, you know what I mean, that have been around and, and been around just as long as them. But she had the wherewithal and she had the, the strength to, to be like, no, that they got a long idle to get there. By the time they get there, the way this fog's clear, it'll be clear and they'll be fine. That there was no beef, you know what I mean? Just but but I'm just yeah. saying, think about being in that position. You're a female stepping in for trip wealth, a several male co workers, you know what I mean? In a male dominated world, stood up and said, Hey man, I think you should think about, you know what I mean? I don't know if I'd go. And she made the right call, but it wasn't that she made the right call, and it wasn't that their call was wrong because both calls were right, you know what I mean? Both calls were in the safety of the anglers. But it was that she was strong enough to stick with what the call was. And that's all that you want in that position. You want somebody who, who thinks it through and makes the right call for everybody involved. And, and that's what Tripp's always been. And, and she, you know, um, does not look at all like Tripp, but, but very similar <laughs> to Tripp uh, in that way. And the other thing that's similar to her is it's one of the things I talked about Tripp last week that I love. And, and I think it's really important to have in that position – you have to love that sport. She loves it. You know what I mean? She loves the morning takeoff. She loves, she loves every part of it. You know, she's obsessed with it. If, if she wasn't doing this, she'd be part of it. So, so my opinion, and I hope to God that this is going to make my working environment really uncomfortable if they announce tomorrow that <sighs> Chris Bowes is the new tournament director for You're the Elite Series. so screwed right now. <laughs> I really didn't think about it until it just came out of my mouth right now. I'm like, said, I'm like, and then I just realized, oh, shit. so anyways, it'd be nice to, I think she, she'd be good at the job. I, I would like to, I would like to say that we have had several conversations about female anglers and stuff uh, in recent episodes. And how cool would it be for the Bassmaster Elite Series tournament director to be a female for the first time in history at that level of sport? That's cool, man. That shows you that the world is uh, is changing, in my yeah. opinion. If that if that happens, of course, I know you well enough. No, you could be wrong. Uh, you could have terrible information, and they'll probably make another announcement tomorrow that I, I will hear I about know. before you. But I no, I know this is, is your guess. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I just yeah. think uh, this is who I think it should be. But I'm really worried now because I'm sitting here thinking, like, <laughs> dude, if it's Chris Bowes or something, like, I work with that person. Like, it's gonna. I, it's not like I hope when this airs that all the people that you named just text you immediately. Go well, thanks a lot, Dave. You sure talked about Lisa a lot. <laughs> I said they were great in the positions they are. They're too valuable. Oh, in trouble. I knew this job was going to screw my head. Oh, yeah. Your real job, the the free job that you do is <laughs> your real job. In Trust me, buddy. Uh, my, my little podcast does the same. So uh, <laughs> many times. Uh, so, uh, but here's, here's one thing I want to, because we kind of got off track in something here and it will get off track in the comments about, how cool it would be to have a female tournament director. This isn't anything. I mean, it, that would be cool. Don't get me wrong. But this isn't about a male-female thing. I just think no, she's the right person for the job. And, and she really uh, yeah. is incredible. She has experience. And she has experience. The, the angler She's been doing it. Yeah. Um, seem to love dealing with her. Um, she's. I just think she's, she's great at the job. And, and I will say that I think our entire tournament staff is is great like we have a great crew but that's because we we have the best captain there ever 
has been in that position. That's Trip Walden, and it, right. that captain sets up his crew for when he leaves. And I, I, I will say that Trip set it up incredibly, incredibly well. Do you think that they say the same about like you and Zona? No. Yeah. I, I, I figured as much. Yeah, probably. Like, yeah. You don't know, ever sit around a table like we have the greatest MC <laughs> and commentators in the history of the world. <laughs> no, you know what they say? Trip on his podcast you know. would not say this. <laughs> Quit talking so damn much. We got to get these fish back in the water. <laughs> Quit cracking your jokes, Dave. This is not your time. Uh, well, I mean, oh, if I you were it. them, would you say that about us? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, second to you know, I'm making my making my live debut this year, so it's I don't highly, know. It's highly talked about. It is very talked about for a lot of the wrong reasons, actually. But uh, uh, but yeah, I think you guys are a super team. I do uh, the, the 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 varsity indeed in bass fishing and have been for a long time. And I'm not uh, I'm not trying to uh, shower you with compliments, Dave. I think they're. Uh, you know, a perfect segue into our next topic is, you know, tournament directors have to deal with a lot of tough situations, obviously, but there are unwritten rules, you know, in every sport we see, you know, the bat flip in baseball gets people riled up. The, you know, Stop for a second. I, you brought it up. I have to voice my opinion on the freaking <laughs> bat flip in baseball. Here we go. What you pissed off the college football fans. Wrong with baseball. Okay, I... You can't flip the bat. Okay, just just let me just I'm just pointing out things here, Luke. Okay, you tell me your opinion. Okay. They said don't flip the bat. I mean, it caused a big thing with Jose Batista oh, yeah. did it in Ferrano. I mean, we loved it. The rest of the world hated it. But it but any but that in baseball, like if you do an over-the-top celebration, um, is frowned upon. It's not like other sports, correct? Correct. Correct. But if you win the freaking wild card. The wild card. It's okay to freaking put ski goggles on and spray each other with freaking champagne in the same sport where you can't freaking bat flip. How does yeah. that make any sense? You can't celebrate, but if you win a wild card or any subdivisional, like I'm not talking about we're making the World <laughs> Series, you win yeah. anything. They're like, Aah! Baseball is that sport where they do drain the fun out of it a lot. But I think the NFL is the same way sometimes, too, with some of the rules. Now they're, they're letting the celebrations come back on. It's a freaking game. Let them celebrate. But, but my, my point is, Sorry. Dave, you yeah, hijacked my point. But, but there, are, there are different kinds of etiquette, etiquettes, however you want to say that, that are not a, you know specifically written out in the rules, things we see. Things that do get brought to tournament directors' attention that they kind of go, mm, okay, you know, you guys kind of figure it out on your own. One of those situations, and the reason I'm kind of thinking this is uh, the league I'm going to work for this year, the MPFL, their anglers fish all three days. 125 anglers all three days. There's no, there are no cuts. Like FLW has cuts, BPT has cuts, the Elite Series has two cuts, and you get rid of some of the people on the water. The reason this can be a problem, and this is the number one, in my opinion, angler etiquette thing that we see as a tournament angler that you hear about backstage, the bickering and the bitching and the fighting, and you're like, oh, did you hear what happened with so-and-so? It's every tournament I've ever been in is sharing water. It's a really big deal. If you're leading the tournament, you're expected, don't you come within 10 miles of my area. You know, we've seen the Tommy Biffle rule. Get out of here. I'm fishing this whole lake. You know, that, these kind of guys. But the cuts kind of take care of some of that. So we're heading into a year where the leader is going to be fishing at the same time as the dude that's in last place that could desperately need a check. He might be able to catch something and catch up and get to 50th place. What is going in an angler's – what goes on in an angler's mind in this situation? Like, there are, are different levels of it. Did you practice the area? Did you just see the guy? Did you see Jacob Wheeler sitting over there so he decided to slide over there and stop because he's catching 100? Like, what are the things you hear in this situation, Dave? Like, what do you think about this? Like, if a guy's leading or a guy's in the top 10, should you stay out of the area? Should you go in there? Should you, like, how's this play out? Well, and I think to clarify just a little bit, you know, because the NPFL situation of having them all fish all three days is the rarity, right? But but let's just it is the, the first the first two days. Um, uh, and before we get into that, though, do, did NPFL do that? Just curious, because it's 
Is that to create drama or is that just what their anglers want? Because, I mean, if I'm starting the league, I'll let them all go at it. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I, I don't want to get eyeballs, I guess. I think the thought process behind it was not because I've been in several meetings where it's definitely not. They don't want the drama. You know, they've addressed the anglers in several situations that have been concerned about it. Like, look, you know, we're going to we're going to handle things like this. It's not a written rule, but like we're not encouraging people to come in on you. You know, if you're in the top 10 and they're 70th. Right. Um, but I, I think that their thought process is, look, and, I, and I'm a guy when I fished FLW, had one tournament in particular. I'll never forget Lake Lanier. I jumped 80 spots mm-hmm. on day two to get a $10,000 check, but the top 20 goes out on day three. And, dude, I was hammering them. And all I wanted was another day, and I didn't have it. And if I had that other day, I might make that final round cut. I might jump up into the top 10 easily on a lake like that because the weights were so stacked, right? I caught a big bag day two, stubbed my toe a little bit day one, jumped back into the check, which I was grateful for. But one more day out there, like I had it. By the end of that day, I was like, dude, it's it's happening. And – I think that's their point here is these guys are a lot of people. Now, if you're 125th and you're in Florida and everybody's catching 20-pound stringers or whatever, you may want to go home after day two, right? Like you might not have a chance to get back in it. But if you're that dude in 80th and all you got to do is make it to 50th and you might catch that 25-pound bag, you still got a chance to get paid. You're never out of it. So I think that's the point is you're never out of it from a coverage standpoint. For me, it's a nightmare because how oh, yeah. do we know? Because some the right dude, guys, absolutely. A dude in 60th could catch the biggest bag of the day and jump up to 12th and nobody, we don't have any footage. We don't know. I mean, for me, that's in my mind for my job with the NBFL. And I've told them this, I'm like, that's terrifying. Yeah. Right. Like, how many times have we seen recently in elite series, you know, history, we talked about this before, but a dude jumping from 10th or 12th to win the freaking tournament from 15th. So that's possible. You may not even have a camera on the dude. Yeah, you start might, today. might find yourself in Jason Christie, true life Absolutely. stories. Have to Absolutely. retell footage you don't have. <laughs> ID channel. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think that that was their idea behind that for sure, man, was just give everybody a chance. Now, will it create drama? Absolutely. Are you going to have situations where some dude's in the top five and some guy's 45th is going to be in, on his water? Yep. Is it going to happen? Yep. It just does. It does. Now, whether that's inadvertently or advertently, can't speak to that, right? A guy could have spent his three-day practice in the same area, could have been there the first two days. Now, if you see that situation, the anglers probably figure it out and like, hey, we'll just work it out. You have been in here the first two days. I just called him a little better than you, whatever. But, dude, if I'm a guy trying to get a check and a guy's on the top ten and we've shared an area all week, I don't know how I make the call to not get a check to feed my family by letting him have the area so he can win and me potentially not catch enough on day three to get a check. I don't know, man. It's That's a weird one. So it's going to be interesting in that situation. But you guys see it hell with just ten anglers out there. You see it. Okay, you've cross-threaded my brain here with all these <laughs> days, and if I got a check, and if I'm in 50th, but I want it's the tournament angler in me. Sorry, and sorry, and sorry. That one time I moved up 80 spots, but I sucked the first day, but I guaranteed yeah. I would have been great. You just have to look at the <laughs> first two days to get it less confusing. <laughs> For those of you just joining us, in tournament angling, there's a standard <laughs> practice. On day one and day two, we reverse the orders. The reason for of t- that of takeoff, of blast when you leave the dock. Yeah, let's explain that. Was I not explain doing a good No, you said reverse the you orders. You just had 37 minutes to freaking explain it, and you could Google and me, might not a know man who does this for a living. <laughs> All I'm saying I is- am varsity now. <laughs> All I'm saying, people, is okay. On day one, they go out in one order. We reverse the order of takeoff on day number two. So boat number one is the last boat on day yes. two. And boat then the last boat on day one becomes the first boat on day two. The reason for that is to give them all equal opportunity to get first crack at the spots. The problem being <laughs> if said day one later is leading and he's at an early number on day number one and you go to his spot is that right or wrong because by the letter of the rule gray rule you're supposed to all have the same rights but in today's world with all the coverage and everything it's real easy to see where someone's catching them and just 
beat them to it. So what, what is the right call? I mean, I, I've removed myself from it. Like when anglers argue backstage, to be honest, I mean, I just, I, I watch. Like I, Oh yeah. I just, it's entertaining. It's just, I used to try and take sides like I'd be. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, you idiots are never going to get along. Just so you know, no. I mean, they love each other. Like they're like they're like siblings. The anglers are like siblings. Okay, I mean they're they'll fight. They'll claw each other's eyes out. You know, you weren't supposed to be at that spot. I hate your guts. Blah blah blah. But if somebody comes against like the group, I mean they turn <laughs> on. Like you know what I mean? Like it's like you oh, yeah. whatever you want to your brother. But if somebody says your brother's nitty, you punch that guy in the That's face. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, so anglers are always going to get disputed. There's going to be disputes, but that's also because they're competing, right? But I, I don't, Big money I on the really line. don't know risk. what the right move is because I look at this and to the letter of the law, we're all supposed to get first shot, right? So, but it's not to that. How does it change? Like, well, where, when is it? If I'm just, I'm a new angler. I'm just fishing tournaments. What? What? Tell me what to do. What is the right thing? It's situational. <laughs> and I bet it, it is, man. It is, and I think all etiquette, kind of unwritten rules, are situational. It's yeah. like, yeah. it's like for a basketball reference. My kids play middle school basketball. If you're up by fifty points, stop freaking full court pressing the other team. Okay, like that's like an unwritten. There's not a rule against it. You can beat them by a hundred. That's how you keep score. The best team wins. But when it's when it becomes demoralizing in that sense, like I'm out on that, right? Well, in these situations, I think I have been in these, dude, where I might be 25th sharing an area with a dude in the top five, but we were both there at the same time on day one, and we're like, going to be back tomorrow? Yep, see you then, buddy. And you just figured out he might have caught a couple bigger than you, dude. I, I've – no, but that's in that situation. That that's is different. not the that, rule that you were both. That's there. not the rule. That's the that's rule, not the rule. The reason we reverse the order is because you got I first know. shot on day one. You were boat number one. Absolutely. I was boat one hundred. I didn't get. We both found that spot in prefish allegedly because everything's alleged. Everything's alleged. alleged. Everything's alleged yes. The truth. Um, so we both found that spot. Why should I not be able to go there? Like, I, I, mean, don't, I don't think that you should be. I don't care be. if you're leading. I will be leading if I catch him today. I mean, you've got to go do what I did yesterday, in my opinion. I don't, I don't disagree. I think as long as it's I legit. I don't agree either, just so you know. Like, well, it, I, think it's, I, is, I think as long as it's legit, but, dude, that's so hard to prove. Hey, man, I found those on Tuesday in practice as well. You beat me here yesterday, and, and you called him, and you're at the top of the leaderboard, and I'm 60th, but I'm going to beat you there tomorrow. And, dude, I've been backstage and heard those conversations. Hey, buddy, I'm going to be there tomorrow. Like, I've I've been there for those tank talk situations that are not oh, fun yeah. to yeah. be a part of. And, like, hey, buddy, you got first shot at but that order reverses, or there was a confrontation on it. Like, especially in offshore tournaments, you get a guy that's there first, and we've gotten to this mentality, and I grew up not being this way, not fishing this way, not sharing spots, right? If a guy was on a place on the Tennessee River, you just kept on going and you came back later. We don't have that mentality anymore, and pro fishing has done this where guys pile up on spots. Dude, you'll see Chickamauga, Kentucky Lake, and FLWs, I was in seven, eight, nine, ten boats sharing an offshore freaking hump. And I'm like, all you're doing is canceling each other out. This is insanity. But people just pile up, pile up. And then you get the guy that goes, hey, buddy, mm-mm. you keep on going. You keep on. And then and then you get this stuff backstage. Well, I'll be there tomorrow, no matter what place they're in. So, dude, I think it's very situational. I think it is. For me, I could never do it. If a guy beat me to a spot on day one, I wasn't going to try to race him there on day two. Did it make me a terrible tournament angler? Maybe. But I was never that aggressive. I was never going to do that to somebody because I did not want someone doing that to me. Did I share spots with people? Absolutely. That stuff happens. But in that whole, I'm going to beat you there tomorrow, get ready situation, no, never do that. But I was the guy, if I saw someone on a stretch, I wouldn't even go in there on day two. If they were a lot higher than me, it wasn't fair to me. It wasn't fair to them, in my opinion. And I think there should be more of that. How much did that hurt you? How much did that hurt you? A lot. This? I mean, a how lot. important is is that killer that step on their throat and end it's it? Every, it's everything. Fishing. It's everything. And all the guys you follow that are the best, they've got it. And they don't care. 
They may play it up. They may smile on stage. They may whatever. But the thing that separates guys like me from guys like them is they don't, I don't, ha- I don't have it. I don't have that killer instinct. If I made a top 20 cut, I was happy to be there. They make a top yeah. 20 cut. They're pissed that they're not fifth. They're pissed that they're not third. They're pissed that they're not leading. And they'll do whatever it takes, barring anything illegal, but they'll do whatever it takes, man. I've seen moves on the water cutting people off. There's one tree down a damn bank and you see a guy run in front of another dude to go flip it and catch uh-huh. one. I'll never do that. Guys do that. They don't give a damn. They go on. And some of the biggest names in sport, dude, I've seen this stuff. I could never bring myself to do it. And for me, it was a fear of Marty Duncan, my father, popping up on the back deck and going, whack, because I wasn't raised that way. And that's just that's just the truth. And now, dude, tournament fishing has changed. I grew up old school. We see that now more. We see guys sharing spots. We see guys beating people to spots on day two. So for me, I can never do it. Can I tell somebody it's wrong? No. I can never tell somebody, like, whatever. If you can justify it in your mind, do it. Do it. But it, it's it's a slippery slope. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. And I don't think you can never write a rule about it, though, right? Because then everybody will boycott the entire organization. You can never say, well, if you weren't there on day one, you can't go there day two. You, that can never be the letter of the law, right? So it's a tricky, tricky situation, man. And every sport, you know, needs to police itself. You can't, you can rule a sport to death too. You know what I mean? Like that, I know there'll yes. be somebody who's like, well, why don't they just put uh, chips in their GPS? No. So we know who's <laughs> been, I mean, you can't do that. Sometimes uh, I'm going to throw a famous person <laughs> line once the trip Weldon dropped on me and he said, not every day is a church service out there. <laughs> and it is the most, <laughs> most true. That's incredible. It's, it's true, but it is, it's incredible. It's, and, but it's That's true. a good one. Um, and, 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 you know, they have to patrol the, themselves to a, to a certain extent. Absolutely. Um, but I will say there's one exception to the rule. You said that every one of them that you see um, has that, Killer instinct. And, and yeah. you're right for the most part. Like the Kevin, all of them. I mean, dudes, you beat Kevin at freaking Jenga and he wants to slice your Achilles tendon. Yes. Um, he's a very competitive person. Um, all, all of them. I mean, anybody I know that's spent any time with super successful athletes, you know, I, I have a buddy who spent a bunch of time with Michael Jordan and and he's like, Michael Jordan bats on. Here's the name you dropped. (laughs) No, no, it's a wild name, but Michael Jordan. (laughs) That's insane. That's just 26 rounds of golf. This guy's played with Michael Jordan. Not that he's counting or anything. 26. Uh, But he's. Can we get his digits for this uh, dumb show uh, we do? Maybe we'll call him up next show. You never know who we're going to call on this show. But he said that Michael Jordan's always, always batting. Oh, it, like it, 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 and it's it's not the bad thing. It's just everything is a competition, and Kevin's like that. They're all like that. Every no one, man, yeah, one exception, and, and he blows me away. He's so different than everybody. Aaron, I mean, yeah, Aaron, that's true. I'm gonna tell you, man. When Aaron, I've been, Aaron's the only guy I know who uh, who apologized for doing too good. To a certain extent, if you remember yeah. his last Bassmaster Angler, the last the third one that he won, the last one he won here, um, he won Angler of the Year, and, and he won that in uh, on Lake Saint Clair. And if you remember the first two days of the tournament, he went ran up to Huron, and uh, you know he had decided he had already won it by day number three. He slept in that day, didn't show up on time for takeoff that morning, and shows up. And goes right out in front of Metro Beach where we're running the tournament. Like literally a mile out. He's just idling out. He's going to fish there. He doesn't care what he catches. He's just fishing his tournament out. He's going to win Angler of the Year. It's all good, right? So I go out to do coverage. I get on his boat. And I'm like, how are you doing? He's like, bro, you're not going to believe this. I have like 22, 23 pounds. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And he's like, no, bro. I can't believe it, man. They're on fire. He's like. Doesn't matter where I go. I, I'm like, you catch them everywhere, dude. You are, you are the furious hog snatcher. I mean, you, 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 I mean, where can't you? He's like, I know. I've, I'm starting to feel bad. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, man. I just, it's, I, I feel bad. Some guys are having a hard time. And I'm like, do you, are you really? And he's like, I honestly am. And I'm like, dude, you have 17 reasons 
to never feel bad. And those are all the seconds he has. At pass, no doubt. And, yeah. and, and, but, but he's the only angler. Like that's the human being that Aaron Martins is like, he, he doesn't think like other people. He doesn't act like other people. And he's one of those people that when you leave him, you start to feel like, I'm, am I a worse person? You know what I mean? Like really he, the way he thinks about things, like, I mean, his fishing ability to think of things and look at things like nobody else is amazing, but his caring, you know what I mean? Like every time you're with him, every conversation you have with him, you feel like, man, that guy really is happy to see me. You know what I Without mean? Without a doubt. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we had a conversation in the boat that day and he really like felt bad that he was, how good he was doing it. It's, it's amazing. And I wonder, sometimes I've wondered to myself, I've like, if you look at what Aaron's accomplished in his career and, and is still accomplishing, what would he have accomplished if he had a little bit of that? You know what I mean? If you just sprinkle a little bit of KVD, I'm going to get you. A little you. bit of that. <laughs> yeah. The black, black beard, the pirate, you know, I'm coming in there. Because it is rare. It. No, it is rare. You have to. You have to. And, and he is the exception to the rule, but you, but you're right. You're right. Uh, the other thing that I will say, point out is guaranteed that those arguments that you're talking about, they happen more at the end of the season. Oh baby. Do they ever. <laughs> As the season goes on, you know, week one, week two, you know, we'll be in the St. John's river. They'll all get along. I High mean, fives around get... hugs. Good to see you again. Yeah. Great to be back. But as back in session, things build and the pressure builds. It gets harder and harder on them. That, and uh, that those championship cut lines. Your first, this guy's on this side of it. This guy's in it. You haven't gotten a check. This is going on at home. Yeah, you get about midway through the season, you start seeing guys on the water do things that ordinarily they wouldn't do. You know, out of character stuff. I mean, yeah, that, that's a great point, man. I, I can't tell you some of the stuff that you would see like that fourth, fifth, sixth tournament of the year, and you're like. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, you know, I, don't necessarily I, agree with that. Yeah. And, and, and that's what you see happen. I mean, there are life. people who, to be honest, not everything's for everybody. I mean, tournament fishing is not for everyone. There are certain people no. that, you know, as they wake their way up, they're like, hey, man, this is this is too cutthroat for me here. Or this is, I mean, it's a... Uh, it's a different, it's, it's different for everyone. You know what I mean? It and, is. And, and, and uh, I mean, I, I'll be honest, even myself as a tournament competitor, I didn't like the person I was as a competitor that, that, oh, that yeah, anger man. to be like, I got to beat him to that dock or I got to be the first one there. Like I didn't, it, I didn't well, like it, it swells up inside of you too, dude. Like it, I go into that mode. If I'm fishing a 20 boat tournament with, with Hudson, my 13 year old, I'm, I dude, I'm right in it. It takes me one blast off and I'm like, Ugh. like, I mean, and I, and I don't have, like I said, I don't have that killer instinct of other people, but I'm still like, we gotta get, we gotta get there before they do it. You know, you, you just immediately. And then I, I hear my son say that though. Right. I hear him go, Dad, we gotta we gotta go back down that, that, that bank where we caught those fish. We can't let those guys go there. I mean, I see it in him. Like it takes that long, and you pick up on what's going on, you know, in the sport. And it is like that, man. And then you throw the pressure of paying thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars time away from your family, dude. There are so many things that I wish, and I hope with this podcast and and with Low Budget Live that we can, you know, bring people in kind of the the backstage life, so to speak, because. It's not all bubbles and butterflies, man. And people no. hear about those things, but it's, it's not. And I think, and that's why you have such an amazing perspective because, dude, you you do get to see and hear a lot. And, and like you said last week in the Rob interview, you've seen grown man cry. You've seen you've seen the best of the best not be able to make it. And it, that's, that's what this show's about, man. So, uh, you know, I think we can end it this week. I don't think we need to talk about any sports or anything, Dave. I think we did whoa, a really good job whoa, talking about fishing. Whoa. Uh, I'd like to appreciate, I appreciate each and every one of you, you know, every week, you LD now. and the MC, uh, LD and the MC is just, Turn it's really, on. it's about time to make me full screen anyways. Hey, before we leave fishing, dude, that topic we're on, I'm going to give you a few seconds of reprieve here away from what we are about okay. to talk about, which is the, mic. yeah, I don't even, you know, but, 
that thing we just talked about is the most important thing as a competitor. When you think about it, like when you say that killer instinct that we both said you need to have, but it's such a balance because when you say that, like I, you started talking, I started talking about me as a tournament angler and how I need to get there and how you and Hudson compete. You need oh, like, yeah. it comes back. But when you really think about it, like the anglers we've mentioned, they have that killer instinct, but they're all so incredibly chill. Like you have yeah. to have killer. Oh, it's yeah. not killer like football. And that's where the mistake happens a lot of times. People put, I, you know, the iPods in and they freaking just, start jamming out the ready to freaking fish tournaments. But if you look at the best of the best, I mean, they got that killer instinct, but they also got that valve where they can keep it level. Cause the only exception to the rule, really, if you look at like the true greats who have accomplished like, is I can Ellie. He's the only spaz. That's really, <laughs> like, if you look at it, Skeet and Kevin and everything, oh, yeah. Ike is the only dude that looks it just loses his shit. Like, yes, all, <laughs> the wheels are falling off a lot. Yeah. Uh, and it could be going good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. That, dude, that's, a, that's another good point. It's that uh, being able to block out when one negative thing. My favorite Kevin Van Dam quote ever, and it was from an FLW at the Red River. He made the top five. I was a kid watching this on ESPN play out, and he lost like a five-pounder. And at that Red River event, dude, it was huge. And he said – yeah, I can only control the things I can control. And I just got to recognize that I was doing something to get a quality bite and keep doing it. And dude, he's just like, and then he called it like another big one, like yeah. 10 minutes later or whatever. And I'm going, most guys sit down, break a rod, cry, game over. And he didn't win the event. He didn't win that event, but he was like second or third. But I'm going, that was, I mean, I was as a kid, I was like, wow. Like you control the things you can control. And he was like, I mean, dude, big, big fish, dramatic, comes up, throws his jig, whatever. And he's like, right back, next guy, whatever. Like, never, never, just never no. bu bugged him. Like, okay. It's like the hook in the hand at Toledo Ben. That time, I'm crying. You know, that happens to me. <laughs> Some dude comes over, gets it out. He's like, oh, yeah, it's an eight pounder. Oh, KVD, you know, game changer, baby. You know, it's, it is very much, you've got to have equal parts, I think. And I think, um, you know, uh, the next time that we talk about sports on the show, we could talk about killer instincts, uh, things yeah. that, that people have. Like uh, there are people like uh, Ryan Tannehill, uh, you know, some of the Derrick Henry's of the world. They they have they just have such talent, and uh, and I think next football season, when football season kicks back up next year in September. You know, that first preseason game, Dave, I can't wait for the NFL to start. I can't believe the season's over, really, but it okay, uh, let me it definitely ended. Out. It ended, and, uh, you know, it's, it's – Two points. It ended on a good note. Two points before we get started here. <laughs> I mean, you, you, number one, won't stop talking about how varsity you are. And I will repeatedly so tell varsity. you, one of the keys of being varsity is not repeatedly reminding people how varsity you are, number one. <laughs> Number two is when you have a victory, <laughs> lead with that. I mean, you, you you did win something this week. I mean, I did. it's not all cheap. One and one. One and one. One and one. Let's talk. We're tied. First. Okay. Robert McGregor, I was totally wrong. They rub it in, whatever. The diamond, baby. The diamond. The, he, that he Louisiana bad really boy. I care about the sport. Louisiana bad boy. Louisiana bad boy. I listen. I had a liquor drink. I watched those fights like I was the UFC biggest fan, dude. I've watched the last couple pay per views. I enjoy it. I don't enjoy what it does to my bank account. I don't enjoy that they're on at freaking three in the morning. I feel like by the time I get to see the actual fight go down, there were a lot of good fights. But the dude, I told you, and I make my, I make my freaking every decision in life based off of people's stories and characters. I don't look at stats. I don't know shit about shit, but I will say he's been on uh, the podcast. I listen to a lot. The Ovon, uh, you know, this past weekend, dude's a good, he's a good dude. But what I heard in his last interview though, that made me pick him was this guy sounded like he was so freaking unbelievably dialed in and I felt like Connor, who is larger than life, who I love watching, even though I'm a casual UFC fan, 
he made that sport what it is, in my opinion. He grew it exponentially because of the swagger and everything else. And I felt like leading up to this fight, it wasn't that – because I follow Connor, I follow along with all this stuff just because he's an amazing character. felt like it wasn't that Connor we've seen in the past with the mouth running and, like, the – I didn't feel like it was that. And, and maybe that's a respect thing for Dustin, and we saw that. Like, that blew me away. Like, how Connor handled defeat impressed me more oh, than any of his – Incredible! It had it's always had been a, that way. Yeah, yeah. But dude, that that blew me away in this one. And I heard yesterday somebody said that he was walking out on a crutch, and he's like, "You broke my leg." You, you know, whatever. Like yelling at Dustin, but like, you know, good job again. Gave him a nod on that, right? So, you know, I I, I did win. the The disappointing thing with this for me, Dave, was that it was my pick. It was my pick in week one of LD and MC. Uh-huh. It's yes, now it week was. fourteen. In the week yeah. thirteen, I picked it. You and I were going back and forth. Hey, it's great fights, buddy. We were the, the camaraderie was thick. It was great. I was on the couch like, look, Dave and Sarah are watching this like we are, honey. It's, we're friends, Canadians and Tennesseans. And when that Connor fight started, you sent me this gif of him walking out he's doing his little strut and you're like the king is here and uh-huh. i posted this on instagram because he was it, he was there because that seven point, minutes was. in when this happened and this happened he's against the cage and i said damn and i'm sending you this stuff all of a sudden it was sleepy time in canada and you didn't respond at all and during the cheese game it's like everybody under the damn sun is tagging me on instagram and you're texting me and everybody's but no luke gets a little w he gets a little w on ld and the mc i don't even get to rub it in you go to bed you go to bed biggest ufc fan on a go to bed no response no i response. did go to bed yeah no response no response i'm exactly. getting i got a video of me i got a video of a guy being shot with an arrow you know no big deal after the Chiefs game, no big deal. Oh, I get all good. this stuff. But your varsity. Your varsity. So go ahead. Let's let's hear it. No, let's hear it. Let's hear this Chiefs talk. Don't congratulate me on knowing more about UFC than you. It's hard Don't. to congratulate you when you won't shut up. Well, I'd keep waiting on you to interrupt. You hadn't had a problem with that the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm with the Googans with you, buddy. I am, I am just I think this is this 14 might be where it takes a turn. This could be it. Too competitive. You've been on lockdown too long. Are you through? (laughs) No. Are you through? Nope. I'm not going to. I'm not going to take. The battery's got to be running. I'm not going to take this damn Chiefs beating. I'm not going to take it. I was. Would you shut up? And I'm trying to congratulate you on your good pick. Oh my god. I mean, dude. Do you know how many girls you probably could have hooked up with growing up, but you wouldn't shut up long hey, enough while she was trying to kiss hey, you? Hey, hey, <laughs> buddy, I ain't I keeping score or nothing. <laughs> hey, we were all right. That's all I'm going to say, Dave. We were all right. Varsity. Okay, I'm sure you were. I'm sure you were. Whatever the number was, it could have been twice as many. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I will tell you, Dustin Poirier totally beat Conor McGregor. Congratulations. That was a good call. Um McGregor is, uh, you know, exactly what we talked about. If you look at the last statement I made on our last podcast, we're going to find out similar to the Rob Turkle topic. You know what I mean? Like with money, with success, do you have that work ethic? And and I don't think this was a matter of work ethic. I think you said this and this happened. That's not what ended. No, it it wasn't. It, fights are all about matchups, and I would say that that Dustin Poirier exposed something on Connor that's been exposed before. But the difference is, the timer was in Connor's favor in the past. And what I mean by that is, as soon as I saw him not checking leg kicks, I'm like, man, it's going to be a race between his legs and and Connor's left. And and, and Connor caught him a few times and he took it. He did. But, he but did. when you take away, uh, if you notice, people said, well, Connor didn't seem to be moving like he was. Well, no, he wasn't hopping around a lot because he couldn't. You know, his movement was gone. Yeah. So he took away his movement. A brilliant fight by him. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens af- after that. I mean, I, I'd love to see uh, uh, I, I'd love to see. I mean, I think that division's so stacked. No matter what you do in that division, um, I think I think it's got to go. Um, 
I think it's got to go Gaethje Poirier though. For if you're gonna go like for for if 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 you're gonna do a belt, if Khabib's not coming back, yeah. Um, but Connor's always in there a- because. He's like having lunkers on your podcast. He's going to blow it up. You know what I mean? So he's, <laughs> he's always there. So congratulations, Luke. Your unbelievable ability to figure out that Dustin Poirier sounded focused coming into that fight. But I will ask you to do this. Please go out there, do a little research. Just pick any fighter you want that got knocked out in a fight. Watch the pre-fight interviews. They all sound focused. That's how they sound. And then afterwards, if they win, you're like, see how calm and collected this Connor Here, was. Here's the thing, man. The mature. I think he goes boxing. That's my take. I think you think he, Connor goes boxing. I think if they don't give him a fight with Poirier or something that he wants, the Nate Diaz rematch is always there. You know what I mean? That five years from now, you're yeah. still gonna sign up to watch that. So that's always there. I don't think that's a rush. Um but unless they give him something really good, I think he goes boxing. I think he goes and fights Manny Pacquiao and makes himself probably about another 50 to $75 million and, and laughs at all the memes of him sleeping, <laughs> which were, were very entertaining, really. They were, they were as good as the Bernie memes <laughs> last week. Yeah, they were, they were funny. The Bernie uh, and I, you know, the sleep, they came together, those two memes. They did, they did. They did. They did. Those worlds collided, um, <laughs> much like the worlds of the um, Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs. So go ahead. Uh, so what was our yeah. bet? What was our bet? I was going to write uh, a you, I you were going to write about- do some research. <laughs> No less than 10 minutes from my house, believe it or not. How Canadian is this? There is Buffaloes. And I can ride said Buffalo, but that will not be this year. Instead, I'm going to get to shoot you with an arrow. Now, we'll... Yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to pull that off um, with, you know, for life insurance reasons and different things. Uh, bet health bet. reasons. Yeah, I'm, listen, the Elite Series, Pickwick Lake, Florence, Alabama. Get, get a bow and arrow. Of some sort, you know, hopefully nerf ish. <laughs> it's not nerfish. It's not, <laughs> dude. I'm, I am now, you right can't, now, I'm sending you literally, these out to Broadhead sponsors. You can't. Who wants to sponsor yeah. the assassination of Luke Duncan? People. Brought to you by people Luke that are, Duncan but Broadheads. <laughs> BD Broadheads. <laughs> Duncan Heads. He makes everything else. Uh, you no. just literally admit, like, you. I lost a bet and I'm gonna die. Like that's the that's no, the bet I get a good shot. shot. It's a good shot. I won't hit you. There's mind. a good chance I'll get it hit in the leg. Oh, it's probably the just arm a bleeder. <laughs> He's no, I like bleeder. to in this podcast. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna yeah, hit you low. yeah. Um, I'll aim low. I'll be honest. I had a lot of uh, a lot of arrow, you know, emojis sent to me via <laughs> Instagram. You humpers, I got a lot of that. Uh, Talk I, to I me about that. Let's not worry about your punishment, which will happen. Stay tuned. Um, let us know how you think it should go down. But but talk to me about the game because because what I'm having trouble understanding is how in a game, how in a world where where we flubbed the kickoff, we're know. down nine nothing. <laughs> How in a world where that freaking happens to the mighty Kansas City Chiefs <gasps> dominate the entire Jesus. freaking game? It's I mean, dude, I may not have had the balls to say it, but it is 100% what I thought going into that game. Ain't nobody hanging with the Chiefs this year. I don't think so. In, in, I don't in, think so. In the AFC anyways, I mean, nah. I'm very excited to see. I mean, it is. I don't care if you're a Chiefs fan. I mean, who? The moment that Brady made it, I felt more pressure. Oh, yeah. Like, everybody wants to see St. Patrick and Tom Brady. It is freaking LeBron versus Jordan in our freaking yep. lifetime. And that's it. You look at the implications and the, you know, like, if Tom were to beat Patrick, you know what I mean? Like, is there anything Patrick can ever – look, number one, could Patrick ever catch him at that point? And even if he could, does not matter because he beat him? Uh, is but if Patrick beats Tom, I mean it's it's going to be a f- 
fireworks from start to finish. It's going to be incredible. It is, man. And I think that uh, Brady and them are firing on all cylinders, dude. Like, yeah. the defense is great. He's obviously Tom freaking Brady. Uh, I was bummed. I like Aaron Rodgers. Like, I like Aaron I Rodgers. I really thought he had I it. did, yeah. And, and I thought that was a really – crappy call to kick that you know fourth down when he's down there fourth and goal How whatever stupid. It's so stupid and well, i don't think i don't think which you know you read whatever but i don't think he'll be there next year like i think he's over lafleur i think that that i mean and he he i don't know if it was on uh mcafee or what like but he's has a quote where he's like yeah there's gonna be a lot of guys in a lot of different jerseys next yeah. year whatever. but i mean i think that's frustration bowling over we'll see money talks ultimately and that's where his whole career has been but guys like brady prove you don't have to you know peyton did it you don't have to close it out where you started necessarily i don't like to see that i think I it's cool to kind of yeah i don't i don't see him not being a packer man but uh but i think the super bowl is gonna be amazing the chiefs are dude as much as crap as we go back and forth with all this and as big of a Titans. But, dude, I didn't want the Titans to play them again. It's nothing but heartbreak. And I mean that, dude. We had them down at halftime last year. It's much like the Bills. I was texting you, giving you hell, like, oh, get ready to ride to Buffalo, you know. But And then we're joking, of course, going, well, yeah, I remember the championship last year, too. Like, it, it when things look like they go against them, dude, they just, they just pummel you. And for the guy to come and, and de- whether that's defense, offense, what it do, they're just all over Buffalo. And then Mahomes is Mahomes. It seemed like every time I looked up, it was like, oh, it's second and goal again. No, oh, they're they're right there. Look at that. I mean, it's like every time I feel like. So, man, I don't. Uh, I think, dude, I think they blow out the Bucks. Like I think they they truly like. I think they blow out Tampa. I don't think they blow up Tampa. I think. You you have to evaluate what you're facing. I mean, Tom, but that's the freaking oh, Miami yeah. Heat of the NFL. Yeah, Just that's right. Tom Brady oh, built yeah. his little sandbox down there. That's right. Pulled the LeBron and Ray. I mean, I hate for him sure. for it. Like that's just not even chief thing. I hate the fact that Tom Brady left. I can't stand uh, Tom Brady. I, I think that's not a Brady I mean, fan. I, no, but I love I, as much as I as a Chiefs fan. You any. You got to hate Tom Brady. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, as a, if you're not a Patriots fan, but as a fan of sports, I hated the fact that he turned his back on whatever. I mean, who knows who turned? I mean, he wanted more pieces. Who knows whatever? But I just feel like, I mean, he put himself in a great opportunity, and and we're gonna we're gonna see it, man. I said it in my little jokey video, and I honestly believe it. Patrick freaking Mahomes is the reason Tom Brady lives in Florida. Don't get yeah. yourself wrong. If Patrick yeah. Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs don't come together to be what they are, if coming from there, let's just say Patrick Mahomes plays baseball. He got drafted by the Lions, mm-hmm. the, 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 the uh, Tigers. The Tigers, the, the yeah. Tigers, yeah. Uh, ironically, the Tigers drafted a Super Bowl winning <laughs> quarterback, but the Lions can't. Um, <laughs> so Just ironic. throwing those shots out there. Uh, Small mouth fishermen unite to hate I'm LD and the MC. I'm sorry. Um, and Stafford, what's going to happen with him? That's going to be interesting. I think he's I he's leaving for sure. You oh, yeah, he's put gone. him in a lot of programs, and they're instant contenders, man. He becomes a – he's a way underrated quarterback, in my opinion. But I um, agree. I forget where my point was before that. Okay, the Chiefs. Well, where was I? Bring me you back. You said that Mahomes was the reason that Tom Brady oh. now has a gazillion dollar house in. If the that no, but if that he, do you know he lives in A Rod's house? He doesn't even have a house. He lives in A Rod's house. Like, hey, A Rod, can I stay in your place while I'm down there? Sure. Airbnb, A Rod's house. <laughs> and what's his name? Lives with them. Antonio Brown lives with Tom Brady down there. That's how Just much to keep an eye on him. <laughs> you're gonna come play with us, but you're living hey, no. with me. You're in eating my the house. same food as me. You're listening to my trainer. <laughs> I'm monitoring your social media conversations. <laughs> but everything that was built in Kansas City is a major reason that a lot of teams are doing what they're doing because of the powerhouse that they are. But I think that obviously I'm a Chiefs fan, but I think that I mean to give that team they don't get enough credit in some ways. Uh, if you saw the team, and, and I've kind of said it all year. I think that Andy Reid and that entire team is a lot smarter than people think. People think, oh, they just win games by six points and stuff. You know who else does that or did that for years? Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. (laughs) Because here's how you win championships in that league, in my opinion. 
you freaking reveal as few cards as possible. You get through yeah. the season, and that's why you see those bonehead weird little flicker plays they do every once in a while. The people are like, what were they just doing? Because they always want to keep you guessing. Keep but you on your toes. On the weekend was even with a subpar Mahomes, all their pieces firing. And uh, whoa, I can't, dude, for the next two weeks, I'm going to be like, uh, I mean, I am so freaking excited to, to this game. Would have me excited regardless, but I but to have a dog in this fight is is awesome. And but let me know in the comments if the Chiefs going to be back to back. Hold on, just talk amongst yourselves. You talk, I got something for you. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. I just I would just like to say I'm sorry all right, just to all you pizza. people out there for oh my god, <sighs> I can't even. I don't. No, some don't people talk varsity with you. Some people are all about varsity. And then this other this people just, just bring the freaking Super Bowl. I'm just the I can't, Super Bowl. I can't with you. What? Why do you have that? Because the Chiefs sent me a copy <laughs> last year. Shit. After they won. Chief, did I have a little notices to my number one Canadian? No. Give me a ring too. No joke. I'm a freaking dude. I, I'm a freaking valued member of the Hunk family. They Thank you guys them. for tuning in. Tell <laughs> Dude, there be another one. You have week. rings? Rings, yeah. Yeah. Maybe this is why the Titans don't win. I'm not that committed. <laughs> you are not committed. I got rings. I got of course, we don't have any reasons to buy rings. We get like participation trophies. Oh, here's a banner. Oh, AFC playoff contenders. Well, you're going to get a very special little souvenir called a broadhead. <laughs> A B B D brought it. <laughs> I don't know. Last week's show was real good. One. This one was a bit of a mess. It but was a mess. It was a mess. Before we go anywhere, we I gotta I gotta be serious for a second because there okay. is somebody out there who we all love, and whether you know him uh, or don't know him, you know of him. And uh, it's a former Bassmaster Classic champion, Woo Dave's, right now battling COVID. Um, we're recording this uh, late Tuesday afternoon. Uh, last update that I got um, was uh, he's in the ICU, so he's uh, he needs prayers. He needs prayers, and uh, put your thoughts and prayers out there for Wu Dave's and his family and everybody battling right now. But uh, I hate to oh, yeah. leave things on a somber note, but uh, I mean they, they, that's that's somebody who is uh, one of the great builders of our sport and uh, an amazing, amazing man. man. Amazing man that uh, I, I had the first run in with Wu I ever had. I was 19 fishing the Bassmaster Open, and dude, he's just like that guy, man. He was, it was so genuine, so kind, would answer any questions you had as your young guys, like, hey, what's it like doing this? You know, competing against the guy, he's so amazing. So, Chris, his son, great dude, great angler. Uh, so, I hate to hear that. I did a little bit about this on LBL. Guys, take COVID serious. Take it serious. We've got to get this thing out of here. We like to give you. A, we like to offer you a distraction from it every week, but it's hard to uh, not pay attention when people that we know and love and care about are uh, are struggling with this. So we appreciate you letting us distract you week after week. But there's some very serious things going on as well. Um, we appreciate each and every one of you showing up to watch this. Whether you love us, hate us don't really know what you feel either way yet. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, if you don't want to look at our ugly faces. Amazon, you name it, Stitcher. We're all over the place. I, I can't. Guys, this has been LD. And the MC.